Playoff Central. I'm Katie Witham along with Andrew Wiebe. We're here getting you set for that second leg of the Western Conference semifinals. Real Salt Lake heading to Los Angeles even after the 0-0 draw. Both sides feel like they're in a position to win, but who has the edge? Well, for me, it's LA. No, they didn't get any away goals, but they probably agree they didn't deserve any at Rio Tinto. In the end, it was below their lofty standard, yes, for sure, but they went unpunished, and now it's win at home, Katie, and move on. And that ought to be the bare minimum that we expect from MLS Cup worthy teams. And a little reference point for you, in their games at home this year at the StubHub Center, 12-1-4. and four. So they're going to be feeling confident. All right. Real Salt Lake, though, I know is going to dispute that, and they're going to do it with good reason. Yeah, they certainly will with good reason. That one LA loss, well, it came in Carson to RSL in the season opener for both. Now, it would have been a draw, but Robbie Keane missed that penalty, or should I say Nick Romando saved yeah. that penalty. <laughs> Since 2012, though, it's all even between these two teams at StubHub. Three wins for both. We know RSL can create chances. They just need a draw, so they're going to feel very confident in this match. They've just got to make those chances count. That was the reason that that first leg ended up scoreless. Real Salt Lake outshot LA 16 to three, but they didn't make it count. Now, yeah, Jaime Pinedo in that game had an unbelievable performance, but in my opinion, LA is going to need a man of the match performance from Robbie Keane in this one. Yeah, no doubt. They'll need to go out and get one from him. And I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say later this offseason, the Irishman, well, he's going to get the MVP award. But what they really need from him now is to replicate that 2012 playoff form. Remember, six goals on the way to an MLS Cup title for LA. But you mentioned it. He just wasn't himself in the first leg. And that was evident on this breakaway for anybody who was watching. This is one of those plays that you expect Keane to score on or at least set up a teammate. Let's start from the beginning, Katie. As you can see, it's a dangerous free kick opportunity for Real Salt Lake. And it's one that LA has to deal with. And they do. Pinedo getting a punch to it. But the ball comes out and you can see Right now, LA wants to start the break, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven RSL players behind the ball, including both center backs. They're thinking, hey, maybe a second ball comes back in, and we score after the play gets recycled. That, of course, does not happen. The ball comes out. We'll skip ahead just a little bit to Landon Donovan playing Robbie Keane in, and this is where you expect him to take off and put a teammate in position to score. The run from Keane, well, you want it right there to draw the defender, perhaps a through ball, maybe a square ball across to his teammates. It doesn't happen. And this is where you're surprised by Robbie Keane's bad touch. He takes it wide, has to slow down. The RSL defense gets in behind, and in the end, it's an easy shot for Nick Romano to handle. It's a wasted opportunity for L.A. Yeah, okay, so how does L.A. open up Keane? Yeah, well, I think the respective identity for these teams, they're set. And while L.A. can break teams down with that intricate passing, I don't think they're going to do that in this game. That's not how they've attacked RSL in the past. Keane's best moment for the Galaxy against RSL have come when they've gone direct or gone on the counter. So let's take a look at those best moments. The five goals he scored in his career against RSL, and you can see none of them comes from that back-to-front sequence. The first, back in 2012, is just a moment of class. Big switch, volley, goal. This really is vintage Robbie. It comes down to getting him in open space, though. And he had plenty last August when he bagged this hat trick. The first comes via a long ball, and Keane simply beats Carlos Salcedo 1v1. He skins Salcedo again after a hopeful long ball on the second, and again after being played in behind on the third. Unfortunately for LA, they won't be seeing Salcedo this Sunday. And then here's the fifth coming this year on a counterattack after a turnover that spoils some extended RSL possession in the Galaxy final third. The common theme here, Katie, isolation against a single defender, either via direct ball or the counter. These are the situations LA has to play for, especially since we know RSL are going to possess the ball for a long time. I expect a better Robbie Keane this time around than the one we saw in leg one. Well, the goal for Real Salt Lake is going to be how to prevent that kind of service. How do they do it? Well, I think they're going to do it in the midfield. I mentioned they want to pin LA back. They do that by overloading on the flanks with that diamond midfield. As you can see here, you're trying to get a 4v3 on this side to create those mismatches to pull guys out of position. The way you do that, a lot of work from your outside midfielders. And in this case, I think Jeff Kassar is going to go with these two guys on the outsides. Ned Grabovoy on the left. Over Luis Gill, who had the double nutmeg that everyone is talking about yes, right now. Yes, double nutmeg. It was very nice. Was we pretty. all enjoyed it on Twitter, but I think he goes with Grabovoy. He's been the starter there all season long. He was ill for that first leg. Back at it now. I think he'll get the start. Maybe he comes off a little later in the match if Gill uh, 
is on to bring in a spark, but Mulholland starts on the right as well. He brings it on both sides of the ball. He's been very productive this year, quietly so, but he's also a guy who can track back and prevent that counter from getting going. All right, the biggest question for me when you look at L.A. is their midfield, specifically with their Brazilians. For me, when I watched that first leg, they were non-existent at times against Real Salt Lake. Yeah, it's an issue for L.A. These two guys are really what makes the team tick in connecting Donovan, Keane, and Zardes. And in this case, I think it'll be Ishizaki on the right. The problem is... They've kind of disappeared, like you said, against RSL. Yeah. From a passing perspective, you can see their games against Salt Lake versus the rest of the league. It's a big drop-off, both in overall play and in the final third. Yes, they need defensive bite from these guys, but they also need them to link up everything else. They need to be better in this home match for LA to get that victory. And that might be the key. They are at home. On paper, when you look at the numbers, it's all pointing to LA. Bruce Arena, the winningest coach in MLS playoff history. LA, an MLS best 27-7-2 in home playoff games. And then you add in the fact that the Galaxy outscored opponents 44-14 to at StubHub Center, just had one loss. Is the deck stacked against Real Salt Lake in this one when you look at it on paper? Yeah, on paper it doesn't look good. You saw it all right there, but I mentioned it. They believe they can win at StubHub. They've done it over the last three seasons. I just don't think they're going to get it done in this one. I think it's a one-goal victory for L.A., probably 2-1. Keen back to his best. Landon Donovan, you know he's not trying to go out in the semifinals. 2-1, RSL ends up really ruining the fact that Jaime Pinedo stifled him at home. All right, they have a lot of momentum, right? I think you're wrong, though. I think it's 1-1. Real Salt Lake goes through on that road goal. Javier Morales has another brilliant performance. That's what we think, though. What do you guys think? Leave it in the comments below because we do. We want to know what you guys think. But don't forget to watch. The second leg of the Western Conference semifinal kicks off 7.30 p.m. Sunday, November 9th. You can catch it on ESPN2, ESPN Deportes, and TSN2 in Canada. Keep it here though we've got all your playoff coverage.